hi everyone. Today we're joined by the lovely Nuran Ahmed. Uh, she was the very first hijab wearing candidate uh, on the BBC show The Apprentice. That was series 10. Um, we'll be talking all things careers, working life, family work balance, um, and Nuran's experience on the show. Um, so welcome Nuran. Uh, thank you for giving us your time. Uh, but I'll get straight into it. Less of me, more of you. Um, so first of all, let's just, you know, open up with a bit of an introduction. Tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, no, firstly, thank you very much for obviously inviting me on uh, to your um, show. And um, yeah, so I think obviously, you know, for those that don't know me, um, I was a former contestant in BBC Apprentice, the first hijabi. Um, other than that, I'm a mother of three, um, a homemaker, a housewife. Um, a businesswoman. I wouldn't really call myself an entrepreneur. I'm quite humble like that. So I just call myself a businesswoman. Um, and I think, um, you know, for me, uh, going onto the show, obviously, it was just a, it was a big dream of mine. And I think whether, you know, for me, it wasn't um, just about, you know, the winning or not winning. For me, it was to participate because it was a dream. Um, and there's a sort of like a, a story behind that dream and that vision as well, which I'll probably uh, touch uh, a little on a little bit about obviously why I wanted to do that so um other than that obviously now we're here in the, you know slap bang in the middle of lockdown um at the moment it's all about you know trying to sort of resume my business and trying to think ahead trying to think outside the box um so yeah you know as it's with anybody else I think you know we're a bit of a you know a bit of a pickle so yeah. alhamdulillah I can't complain no alhamdulillah so true I mean it's crazy with this whole lockdown situation and what it's doing to the economy and stuff like that and Absolutely. obviously we'll touch into that anyway um, but I think honestly seeing you on The Apprentice like I was saying earlier to you um, that it, it, is, it was inspiring to see someone with the hijab going on to such a TV show um, and I remember looking back on that and it's the first time I'd ever seen something like that and actually it inspired me as well to like you know go through these interviews and not be scared mm. just because I'm wearing it shouldn't be a barrier as such you know no. um, and I think you really inspired me to do that anyway so um, so I just want to know what kind of inspired you to go on to The Apprentice in the first place, like what made you want to do that? Mm -hmm. So um, going back to, um, I think, 2000 and um, I think it was four or five when it first aired on TV. And it was something from a very young age. I've always wanted to have a business, you know, sort of the, having that sort of entrepreneurial flair. I was always full of ideas, wanted to do things. And when that show came on, I was like, oh, my God, I can just so see myself on there. And, you know, I, I've got a business idea and I want to do this and I want to do that. And I think I've always sort of been driven um, to, you know, with the business side of things and even when I was at university I was always full of these ideas um you know I've never said none of them manifested because these were just ideas kind of things. I was more, <laughs> of the, yeah, more of the ideas girl so um after I you know I got married and I uh this was uh, my first marriage unfortunately which um didn't go down very well um and I had still had that vision of you know with the support of my husband I'm gonna um you know open a business and um, unfortunately, obviously, his ideas were totally different. He was more controlling. It was unfortunately, um, you know, it was very abusive. Um, there was a lot of, you know, domestic abuse. So that didn't really go down well. And I can remember when every time I used to watch that show and, uh, you know, and I used to live um, in East London. So if you remember with The Apprentice, when the opening uh, clip is of the Canary Wharf. And so I used to, with my kitchen sink window all I used to see was the canary wharf light and I can remember thinking oh my god you know I should be there and I should be doing this and you know here I'm stuck in you know this mundane yeah life and you know my ex would walk in and he would switch off the tv and say oh you know yeah you know this is not you know your your place is in the home um you know oh my god yeah forget about you know business and work and everything so um and even we know obviously he he was able to sort of quash my passion and my vision, but not my dream. I still had that. I still had that fire in me. Um, and I've always wanted to have a, you know, a business. And I was always, I was always inspired by that, you know, the show as an avid fan. Mm -hmm. So Alhamdulillah, obviously, when my marriage ended after seven years mm -hmm. of a nightmare, um, I remarried Alhamdulillah. And with the support of my husband now, when the application opened in 2014, I can remember my husband saying, oh my God, um, you know, why don't you go for it? And, you know, you'll be so good. And it, it was one of those gut instincts where I knew in my heart that I will get in. I don't know why, it was just one of these random, yeah. ones, to be honest. And in that year, because it was the 10th anniversary, there was over 80,000 applicants. 
can you imagine 80,000 applicants oh and, yeah, and to be you know part of that 20 for me was just like you know like a dream come true and I can remember you know obviously with the interview process it's a it's a long elimination process there's so many uh, sort of stages there's about five or six until you make the final cut and I can remember uh, uh, you know with each stage that I was you know sort of you know passing by and my husband was really excited saying oh my god I know you're going to make it and and obviously prior to that my husband helped me set up two of my businesses um so one of them obviously which is a scarf business which I started off very small uh, in Peterborough market and then obviously I grew that and then I went to the high street and that's where I am at the moment um so with my you know with my husband he always encouraged me you know like this was your dream and and the other dream was was obviously going on to the apprentice and I can remember with the final um interview with the producer so this is the final sort of stage where the producer is going to decide you know he's gonna he, there's about 50 50 applicants that they had shortlisted and this is the final 20 that they're going to pick and I can remember I just said to the producer and I cried and I said look you know what I don't really care I don't really care if I make it to the final 20 or not because for me just to come onto the interview stage and to be able to come you know to the apprentice is a closure uh, you know uh, to my past yeah. because of everything that I had gone through and the fact of the matter is I actually made it alive out yes. of that marriage and exactly. here I am exactly here I am exactly. talking about you know how you know that journey and the association of uh, the apprentice and my marriage and you know it, it breaking down and I said you know and I, I can remember the producer crying with me and I said look you know for me you know whether I make it onto the show I don't really care because this for me is enough I've yeah. proven to myself that I was able to come out of a bad situation and totally turn it around and this is what, yeah, this is where it's ended. And I think, you know, afterwards when the producer called me and she said, you just, you know, you, you just got me there. You know, you just literally had me. She goes to me, you just had me. And she goes, I just knew that, you know, it was just a story, you know, it's just your journey. So Alhamdulillah, now with my business and everything and, you know, going off the show. So like I said, it was just the passion and the dream of just being on the show. And I think that journey and it mean being the whole journey of my first marriage being so sentimental to me, that is what drove me and it's that motivation and it was just to prove to myself that yeah. yes I can and I can believe in myself and I can conquer my dreams and dreams I can manifest my dreams so that for me was just a thing to prove you know what, that's amazing and you really proved it amazingly because <laughs> I mean just looking at you on the show you'd never know that you know um and no. hearing that I mean the people so we we and we and have we also have the Muslim Women's Network UK. We have a helpline where we help women who go through domestic abuse. Mm. We people from all across the country, um, and the things that happen, and you just listen to all these stories. But then there's so many, they're so inspiring because that strength it takes to get through it. And for you, it was that thing of actually coming out of that marriage and saying, look, and not only that, but I'm going to put myself in such a more, even more vulnerable position in front of the, in front of the public, <laughs> you know, that's a big deal. Um, so, it, you know, mashallah, your bravery, that's, that's another, that's another thing all in its own, you know, because, and you've inspired people indirectly. I bet you didn't even realise you probably would, but that is amazing. Like the journey you've been on and mm. just, it's amazing. Um, but yeah, that's, that's um I guess I was the next question I was getting to was kind of what did you have to do in the application process so yeah no like I said it was um it was you know like the first I can remember the first stage was we had to do this um 30 second or 40 second sort of intro like you know hey you know with all the little cheesy <laughs> cliche, um sugar and spice and you know all, all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so all of, you really have to sell yourself it's yeah. like the ele you know it's like the elevator pitch yeah. the elevator pitch yeah and then literally it was like okay you 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 know you go to the next stage and it was kind of interview after interview and then role plays and it was just so tiring but oh, you know um I think once you make it to the show and a lot of people have asked me look would you ever do it again and I swear wallahi I would never do it again because it was the most hardest thing I've ever done really? um it's not all that you know everything that you see it's like you know we have like you know, over 12 hours of filming, you won't believe this. And out of that 12 hours, they cut everything so much and they edit things to their liking. Yeah. And they're the ones that are doing the storytelling and the storyboard. So, you know, and, you know, for me, I, I don't know, you know, for me, I had so much 
to think about because I was so conscious representing um, a hijabi, a Muslim, well, Islam. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be seen of wearing a headscarf and being a backstabber, being manipulative, being a liar. Yeah. And I was so conscious that I'm representing my faith here. Mm -hmm. And for me, you know, for me, it wasn't about all oh, being the winner or showing myself as to be, you know, like, you know, big bad, you know, big bad boss lady. For me, I was more conscious of my faith. Yeah. And anyone, anybody with integrity would never go on that show. And I learned the hard way. Mm -hmm. And for me, I couldn't bypass that. I really couldn't. I couldn't be, you know, in amongst all of the sort of, you know, uh, cat fights and all the manipulation. I couldn't do it. true. I mean, are these cat fights, I mean, are they just... I just think, is that real? Because I think... No, they're real. We had so many. It's unbelievable, you know. And the funny thing is, you know, sometimes, yeah, because it's like um, you've got the camera people on and you're, 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 you're wired up 24-7 anyway and you're so conscious but then afterwards you forget and so sometimes you let your guard down and you do scream and you do shout and there's so many you know um, so many moments or so many times where I actually just lost it and in my back of my head I was thinking oh my god I really hope that they don't show this because it just shows me the mean yeah. Muslim girl do you get it and um, <laughs> I just didn't want that yeah that is a lot of pressure actually I can't imagine it was it you was know. God, and like, all of a sudden I would just remember and I think oh my god you know I'm, I'm you know I'm going to be on tv and whatever and I can't show myself to be like this and whatever alhamdulillah I didn't have any play I think they wanted me to trip up I personally do think you know they wanted me where yeah. I'm lying or where I'm caught being deceitful or I'm being really? caught, do you understand yeah but I was very very conscious and all mm. in the back of my head was you know is um all I thought was look you know can you imagine, you know, me doing something which went against my faith and the tabloids literally yeah. ripping me apart? Can you imagine that? Oh, no. So I, I, I was, yeah, no, so I just couldn't. So I was very, very, very faith conscious. And um, but Alhamdulillah, you know, like I said, anybody with integrity would never go on there. Wow. It's the hardest thing. Yeah. You know, Alhamdulillah, you know, I think from what I remember anyway, we're watching the series, obviously it's been a long time, but I think I remember you uh, presenting yourself in a really good professional way. Um, and I remember all my family were rooting for you. <laughs> we were like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like honestly, um, but uh, my next question and leads very well is um, kind of, how did it feel? I mean, I think you touched into that kind of overwhelmingness of a lot of pressure. Yeah, yeah. But how did it feel to be the first hijab wearing candidate on The Apprentice? I'm sure you touched a bit about the pressure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think for me, it was a very, very proud moment. And obviously I was super excited because, you know, totally overwhelmed the fact that it was one of my dreams in you know, like, I couldn't believe it. And, you know, you know, I've always wanted to be on the show. And, you know, I used to always hear people saying, oh, I know so-and-so on The Apprentice. And I'd be like, oh my God, why don't I ever meet somebody, you know, that's, you know, that's been on The Apprentice and there's me being on that show. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, for me, the whole experience was so overwhelming, but I think more to say was when I was actually on set, that's when it dawned on me. And that's when you, not just myself, there's a few others, we just wanted out. I don't know if you've, I don't know if you've ever watched the Truman Show where yeah. you've got Jim Carrey, yeah? And oh, I swear... Yeah. The, yeah that for us it was looking for the exit door I promise you really? yeah it was that bad because we realized it's not what we thought it was mm -hmm. it was you know they put you in a situation where they say you've got to choose a or b and both of them being a bad. bottomless pit yeah both of them being bad but if you remember if you recall you know we had um the team name right so we didn't even suggest like I came up with you know decade in decadence yeah and mm -hmm. it was one of these little talks like within um, amongst me and my um, associates or the other candidates and then one mm -hmm. of the other ladies you know they suggested grafters but this wasn't this like I said because we were we were wired up and they picked on it so they yeah. came to us and they said oh we heard you guys talk about these two you've got a or b and we're like hang on a minute that was not even a suggestion yeah. these were just random you understand conversations the brainstorming session yeah absolutely. yeah absolutely but this wasn't even, and it wasn't even it wasn't as a brainstorming session as such we didn't even sit down so they made us do you understand because they thought well both of them are silly names we can really make a meal out of it do you understand yeah oh, so yeah, yeah. every single situation was you've got a or b and both being like really you know bad sort of scenarios yeah. And you're picking, you know, the, the 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 least of the two kind of thing. And you think, oh, my God, you know. So every situation was like that. And so that's when we wanted all out because we thought, oh, my God, this is not exactly. It's that minute you're, you're manipulated. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's almost in like. The, in, absolutely. Because they've, they've got the storyboard and they'll fit you in there. Oh, my 
my god so, um, that sounds hard <laughs> that sounds I mean, it's hard anyway just doing work <laughs> so, so that excitement so that excitement then turned into like oh my god mm. and it was just tiring and you just wanted to get it over done with it just mentally took its toll do you think um wearing the hijab kind of made were you treated differently do you think as a result of wearing the hijab not really because I was very you know like even from the onset I, I I made sure my boundaries were very clear and I said to them that you know when you have when men just suddenly start, start come in and I said you can't just suddenly come in I don't care if you're the cameraman or the director you have to knock mm -hmm. on my door I need to make sure that I'm modestly dressed um oh, and good. yeah you know so you know in the morning where they'll just come in you know, for me, I had that knock knock, and the, the the two other girls that were with me, they were so lucky. They're like, "Oh my God, we're so happy that we're with you," because now we get the yeah, we get the hands uh, the uh, the hands up before they sort of storm in and everything. And um, I and again, about to ask that as well to ask how were the other candidates with you and wearing the scarf? Obviously, it was an advantage to them. Yeah, no, they, they were absolutely. They were they were really supportive. Like every time I did my I did my prayers. Um, they were very supportive you know I, I'd say to them you can't walk past me and then they would ask questions and then <laughs> you had yeah and you had other male candidates I'll come you know the dancers would be like oh why can't we see your hair and especially James James yeah. was more intrigued kind of thing and you know mm -hmm. uh, all of these kind of things and I think um, with the producers you know like they were very 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 accommodating I can tell you that now so oh. every time um, you know they would wire me up I'd say to them because it was a male um, uh, sort of cameraman um, and the audio tech, you know, they would sort of try and wire me up. So now I'd say to them, well, I need to do it myself. So they were very um, aware that they can't touch me. Um, and I think, you know, like when we had, every time, you know, we had a win or whichever it was, I said to, you know, the guys, you can't just come and hug me, you understand? And, you know, I can hug the women. So yeah. I had, I set my boundaries and they were very, very, like I said, accommodating uh, towards know, everything. I think that's amazing also for people to hear that out there as well they're going to yeah. consider doing something always best to kind of be honest right from the start absolutely this absolutely is what I'm willing to do this is what I'm not willing to do yeah uh, and let them decide that's okay for them and yeah. I guess they were obviously fine with that absolutely otherwise you wouldn't have been on the show no absolutely and I think um for me I can remember um before I went to the show and the producer one of the producers asked me oh would you consider taking off your hijab and I think that was a, tr a trick question just to see if I am the person that I really, you know, it's one of those things where you're just a fake person or I'll, I'll do anything to just go on TV. And yeah. I said, I'll never, do you understand? I'll be, I was like, well, you know, for me, I'll never sell my faith just for five minutes of fame. And yeah. I said, if, if that means that I'm not going to go on the show with my hijab, I'd rather walk away now. For me, yes. my faith is far more important than just me going on to this BBC show. Yeah, hundred percent. I think that's amazing. And, I can't imagine that that's, that's the stuff they'd ask. I mean, obviously there's people out there that would then. Yeah, they would exactly, and I think it's just for them, and you know, uh, just to just to see, well, you know, well, is it she's fame hungry, or you know, what is it? Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And for me, um, you know, and and then afterwards they're, they're like, oh, we'll never, you know, we'd never ask you to do so. It's just one of those questions. So in my head, in my head, I knew what they're trying to get at. Just and I said, that. yeah, absolutely, and of course. And I was like, it's not Big Brother that I'm going to suddenly, you know, reveal all, you know, just one bit of fame. And I was like, no, you know. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, it's very interesting to see how the other candidates kind of were just asking you questions about it, mm. which is normal anyway, mm. um, and how they're really accommodating to you. That, that sounds really, really nice as well. Um, I guess my next question is a bit of a fun question is, do you know that scene in the beginning of the show where they're like, the call and the phone and oh, yeah. put down your pajamas and yeah yeah oh the call the you know the car's gonna be ready in like ten minutes <laughs> is that true because no no no, I feel no. That. I you guys look way too glamorous yeah. it takes yeah. me ten minutes to have a cup of coffee exactly <laughs> absolutely so what happens is you'll get the producers you'd hear them coming in they would come in about half or five o'clock we yeah. have half an hour because they had to make sure because uh, it's obviously it's the BBC um, that we had to you know have our breakfast and make sure that we you know we were well nourished and obviously uh, okay. can you imagine putting your makeup on and, and then having breakfast as well in 10 minutes I don't think so, no, so and, then, and then with all the technical stuff with all the uh, visuals and all the audio they had to make sure the sounding everything everybody was wired up so that mm -hmm. took a, another another hour can you imagine mm -hmm. and then what would happen was um, I think um, a night before whatever they'll they'll tell it you know somebody will say oh I want to go and hang you know I want to go and answer the phone and I was one of those like I'll never ever go downstairs and answer the phone <laughs> me in my pajamas and in my hijab I don't think that's a pretty scene so <laughs> I'll be like I'll give it a miss yeah 
and um, so it was you know, like I said every every day it was like the filming only takes about five weeks by the way but obviously it's shown aired across um, 12 mm -hmm. weeks how but it's yeah it's every day honest that's how tiring it is um, and um, some tasks lasted two days so there's two days of filming and other tasks obviously was just the one day so yeah so you we, we had uh, ample time to get ready and obviously I had a little bit more time uh, okay. probably another additional 20 minutes okay. uh, just to make sure because obviously they before they came into my room they had okay. to make sure that I was in a hijab they would make sure uh, that yeah that I had my scarf I said to them I don't care if, 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 I've, got, if I've got no makeup on that's not really a big deal for me yeah but for yeah. me without a headscarf that is a big deal for me that's a big deal yeah and yeah, I, I think of just like you said telling them beforehand isn't it and making managing their expectations absolutely absolutely okay fine um well that's interesting to know actually now I'm, and I knew it I was like that could not be right they're all, they all look way too glamorous for five minutes to get ready. Yeah, you know, of course. That's and with the, the hairspray turner, absolutely. And the thing is, though, there's another interesting fact. Like, the first thing we actually shoot is our um, leaving scene. So it's the fired scene. You won't believe this. Uh, yeah. What? yeah, the first thing that we do is we, because we don't, we all, we all walk into the cab. Yeah. Yes. But the last scene, you know, when we saw, you know, we, when you're giving that big talk, oh, he shouldn't have fired me and, you know, whatever. That is, you know, on the, that's candid and that's done in the taxi. Yeah. But the actual walking in to the cab, that is the first thing that we, sh we, we, the, the, that's the first shoot that we did. That is the first, crazy. yeah. All of us. Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. I bet the, I bet the start we were just like, is that what you're why are we doing this? Why are we planning the end? Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. And the thing is that the producers, they never tell you anything of why we're doing things in, like, you know, there's the method of the madness. They don't tell us anything. So, um, they just tell yeah. you, we're doing this. This is the time. And that's it. Yeah. Here. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Oh, my gosh. My gosh. I'd be there, like, asking, like, really professional. I don't think any recording will get done with me. No, oh, but they don't answer. They're very clever. They, they don't. They don't. They, you, you know, you uh, just get on with it. Yeah. Oh, my God. How interesting. Well, I'm really glad I had this interview with you. <laughs> um, well, okay, so I went to the next question. Um, what is it like to be in the boardroom uh, with Lord Sugar? What's it like there? Oh, um, oh my God. You know, the, the boardroom itself is a grilling three to four hours, and you only get to see that 15 minute of it. Um, mm. it it's really, really bad. And he is very rude and very abrupt. But okay. it is very, very grilling. I mean, he was very nice to me. Okay. Um, you know, and um, he was very respectful. Yeah. Um, but I can remember, but he's very ruthless. Like I said, you know, some people, the candidates that he just didn't like, yeah. he was, he would just literally come down on them. Okay, thank God it wasn't me on the show. Yeah, take him <laughs> back. Yeah. Um.